Of course I said yes, because I love doing little projects for my mother. I mean, come on. But I did not expect for them to be this big. I just think they're beautiful. Well, the tree is down, nobody died. So the other day, my mom asked me if I would do her a favor. And of course I said yes, because I love doing little projects for my mother. And she asked me if I would paint these candlesticks blue and then distress them. She has several of these candlesticks and she just felt like it was just too much white. My mom is pretty primitive country in her uh, decor aesthetic. And she just wanted to change up a couple of them. So she said she wanted a denim blue. She didn't want anything like a royal blue or a navy blue that was too dark. She didn't want anything like Easter egg blue that would be too light. But anyway, she wanted something very close to denim blue. Now, I went on Amazon and fortunately I was able to find a literal color called denim blue and it's Delta Creative uh, Serum Coat and it's just a matte acrylic paint. So this is going to be perfect for painting and then distressing. So I thought I would just let you follow me along while I do this. It's a very simple project. I hope it inspires you to maybe change up some things around your own home. The great thing about acrylic paints and when you're distressing after you paint is you don't have to worry about it being too pristine when you put the paint down. You just wanna get some good coverage and then you're gonna go back in and you're gonna distress. I really love the fact that these are already white distressed because when I do my own distressing, some of the wood is gonna show through but some of the white's gonna show through as well and I think that's gonna look pretty cool. I just finished the first coat on these candlesticks and the coverage isn't great but that's okay I'm gonna go back like I said and do a second coat something I just wanted to mention to you all that I thought about while I was painting is be careful of goopy spots like if clean up any goopy spots when you're painting especially if you're gonna distress because when you go to distress the goopy spots when you go over them with the sandpaper, it's gonna pull off more paint, most likely, <laughs> than what you had intended to have come off. So be careful of the goopy spots. Um, I'm gonna go back and do a second coat. I'm not gonna take you with me on the second coat because it's just the same thing you just saw, but I will go over the distressing with you. So while I'm waiting on those candlesticks to dry, I thought I'd show you a couple of things I got thrifting the other day. I found all three of these pieces of pottery. I absolutely love them. Look at the colors. And I love the three of them together because I feel like the brown goes into with the brown and the blue, which is less brown and more blue. I just think they're beautiful. This one was $5.99, but it was a red tag. So that meant I got it for, I don't know, like $3.60. There is a spot right here, teeny tiny size of a pee hole, but that was not gonna stop me. And I think, Ivy and I were talking about it the other day. I think I might be able to fill this and then finish it off where it blends in really well. If I decide to do that, I will let you know and I'll show you. I just love that. And then these two were $3.99. Oh, gosh, I almost put another hole in it. $3.99. Um, this one was just one that had come up. Um, 
initially from Marshall. But hey, I wouldn't have gotten it for $3.99 at Marshall's, most likely. So yeah, I just I just love those. I thought they're super beautiful. I think I'm gonna have them on the center of my table. I'm gonna live with it for a few days on the center of my table, see if I like them there. If not, I'll find another home for them. Uh, yes, please. I mean, come on. It was in amazing condition. Absolutely amazing. Now, I did check to make sure that I could wash it before I bought it, and I could. So, I brought it home, I took off the slip cover, washed it on delicate, and then of course I Lysoled the insert really, really well. It reminds me of those rugs from the 70s. You know, those, um, oh, I can't remember what they're called, but you know exactly what I mean. And the colors are just amazeballs. And of course, I got books. Excuse the glasses. <laughs> I knew they were going to be big when I ordered them, but I did not expect for them to be this big, but that's okay. I'm, I'm happy with them. All right, so I picked up a few more books, and so I thought I'd just share with you what I got. The first one was Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I already have it, but it was in paperback, so you know what happens with my paperbacks. I send them on to my youngest if she doesn't already have it. And she doesn't have it, so I'm sending this on to her. So I got this one because it is hardcover, and so I'm very happy to have that. The next one is my Angelo's I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. I've always wanted to get my hands on this. I just had never ordered it before, and so I was really pleased when I found it at the thrift store. I'm very happy to have this. The next one is The Turn of the Screw, another short fiction by Henry James. I have a few of Henry James, uh, but I did not have The Turn of the Screw, so I'm happy to have this. The next one was to add to my Virginia Woolf collection. I think it's the only one I don't have, but that is Orlando. Now I know it's kind of mixed reviews. Some people do not consider it one of their favorites of Virginia Woolf's works. I don't know how loud that plane was or if you could even hear it, but boy, it shakes my house. <laughs> anyway, what I was saying is, I know that Orlando has some mixed reviews. Some people love it, some people not so much. A lot of people say it's their least favorite of her works. I love Virginia Woolf, and I honestly haven't read Orlando, so I'm happy to have this. I've been saying I'm happy to have this with every single book that, I, well, yeah, I mean, if you're not happy to have a book, then you probably shouldn't have it, right? The next one is Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities. I have read this a few times, but I've never owned it. I think this is the only thing I was missing in my Charles Dickens collection. I, it's been a lot of years, prob, oh my gosh, I think the last time I read this was when I was reading it with the girls for homeschool, way back when we lived in Pennsylvania. I think that was the last time that I read it, so it's been probably close to 15 years, maybe, so yeah, this is awesome. And then the last one is from the Harvard Classics. I picked it up because it has Defoe, William Defoe in it. It's a collection of English essays. So I love essays. Some people may say it's kind of boring. I really enjoy reading essays. These are very interesting, like on Shakespeare, on Bacon, you could say anything negative about Bacon. Education of Women by Daniel Defoe. That's gonna be a good read. 
po po on posy or art. <laughs> on the realities of imagination. Can't help but see SpongeBob. So that's gonna be really cool. That's gonna be a cool one. So that's what I got on my neck, my last book haul. You're gonna have to excuse me. I've been this week I've really been spending a lot of time creating art and so I'm just wearing like old t-shirts and sweats and stuff like that that I don't mind getting paint and stuff on so just bear with me okay so the candlesticks are dry and I'm gonna go ahead and begin distressing them I'll kind of walk you through what I'm doing in case you all have never painted and distressed anything before and you would like to try something like this um, at home it's a really easy and fun project very quick I think even when I'm finished distressing these maybe the whole project took me all of 30 minutes so I think that's pretty good granted these are candlesticks but if you were to do a table you could do picture frames I mean you could do anything it's just very very simple and that's why I wanted to share it with you so when you're distressing something, what you're going to be doing is taking some sandpaper and just gently wear down the paint where natural wear and tear would happen. Like how it would just happen naturally. On candlesticks, it could be wherever they might get bumped when you're moving them around or where you're always picking them up. Um, you know, if you're doing a table, it would be, you know, the corners, or any place that's being touched a lot, you know, around where the pools are, the corners, if they, if they, as if they've been knocked against the walls or knocked with, with moving around, those kind of things. I'm not concerned about realism uh, with regard to these candlesticks because they were so distressed to begin with and my mother loves things that look distressed and old and decrepit so i'm just going to continue to take the paint down and we'll see what we've got another great thing about distressing is if you feel like you've taken too much off you can always go back over it again so as long as you haven't waxed anything first so if you're going to be waxing i'm not going to be putting any protective wax over these but if you're, say you did a table and you wanted to wax it to keep it, you know, keep the finish nice, make sure that the distressing is how you want it before you go and wax because it can be a real pain in the bahute if you decide to wait um, and change things after waxing. So that's just my, my little tidbit. Mwah, mwah. Mwah, mwah. So here they are, all finished. I just did a light <laughs> distressing as compared to the way that they looked before. They were very, very distressed before. So I took down for sure where I knew that the wood, the wood would show through, and then in a few places for the white. Um, as I said, they're not as heavily as distressed as they were, but with the color being so dark, I, I didn't want to overdo it. I didn't want the white to compete with the blue. I just wanted them to look predominantly blue. That's what my mother wanted, so there it is. Thank you to all of you beautiful bohoish souls that chose to take some of your precious time to spend with me today. I can't tell you how blessed I am to have you here. To all of you that have liked, commented, and subscribed, thank you from the bottom of my heart. It means so much to me. It truly warms my soul. If you're not subscribed, but like what you see, please consider becoming a subscriber. And don't forget to boop the bell. Remember, it's not where you live but how you choose to live. Until next time, bye.